You'll have had your tea, the doings of Hamish and Doom. Today, the monster in the loch. Dougal, Hamish, by the sound of it, you'll have had your tea. <laughs> no, I was just dropping a wee hint. Oh, I knew I'd forgotten something. Right, that's it. We've been out here on the loch for six hours and never a fish. Well, I had a tiddler. Well, that scared the fish away. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it one final cast. Oh, very well. Here goes... How's that for a cast? Dougal? <laughs> Could you pull me back in, please? <laughs> You're supposed to let go of the hook. <laughs> oh, very well, very well. Come here, give me a... Your... Oh, my God! Don't move! What? What is it? What's that sticking up out of the water? Oh, be fair, I'm doing the backstroke. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Thank you. No. No, over there. Behind you. Behind me? Ha -ha! Look at it. Looming over me like a monstrous, great monster of a monster. James, look at the size of it. It's as big as a, as a big tree trunk. It's got me caught in its branch-shaped jaws. Watch out for those twig-shaped claws. <laughs> Hit it! Hit it with what? Hit it with that harpoon gun! Right! Hup. Fire! Got it! Hooray! Hooray! Now let's get this brute ashore. Fame and fortune beckon. Good evening, Mrs. Nochte. Your lordship, I didn't expect to see you popping out of the undergrowth. No, I often take a stroll in my undergrowth. <laughs> and, and you, enjoying your evening constitutional? Oh, no, I had that before I came out. And very good it was too, I'm sure. I believe I'll join you. I often walk this way. Oh, dear, I've got some talcum powder in my bag. <laughs> No need, I'm doing it on purpose. Oh, well, I suppose it's dark. You don't mind if I accompany you? Oh, really, there's no need. Well, no matter, I'll leave the piano here. <laughs> I always say the lock looked its best at night, the full moon shining on the water, the stars twinkling above, the glow from that enormous fire. What's an enormous fire doing glowing out here? My thoughts exactly. Well, Mrs. Nochte, you know what we must do. Indeed I do. And as soon as we've finished, we'll go and investigate that enormous fire. <laughs> oh, what a blaze. Are your chestnuts roasted yet? Aye. <laughs> Aye, it's my own fault for standing too close to the fire. Well, well, who'd have thought it? That log-shaped monster turned out to be nothing more than a monster log. Aye, but it makes a grand fire. Aye. Amy Stugel. Uh, your lordship, Mrs. Nochte. Oh, Mrs. No uh, Mrs. Nochte, the, uh, the back of your skirt, it's uh, tucked into the laird's undergrowth. <laughs> how the youngsters are wearing them these days. You two certainly have a grand bonfire on the go there. <laughs> There's an amusing story behind this bonfire, as it happens, your lordship. Do tell. <laughs> well, we were out fishing and we accidentally harpooned this gigantic log. And you won't believe this, <laughs> but <laughs> we thought it was the monster of the loch. <laughs> <laughs> you fools! It is the monster of the loch. Do you realise what you've just done? 
Our entire tourist industry depends on idiots like you mistaking this old log for the monster. We can say goodbye to my monster boat trips and my peculiar postcard range. And my monster tea shop, not to mention my Highland Fudge outlet. Oh, Dougal is right. You make a fair whack out of your furry monster dollies and your punch and monster show. Aye, as do you with your monster granite key rings and your famous monster lunchbox. <laughs> In one week's time, this place will be crawling with tourists. We've got to find a replacement for the monster. Mrs. Nocte, have you got a rubber suit? You know I have. <laughs> you brought it back from Monte Carlo. Then put it on. It helps me think. <laughs> As for you two, go back to your homes and await my orders. Come in. No tea for me, thank you. And where have you been for the last week in Singapore? That's the last time I go there for no apparent reason. <laughs> now, have I missed anything? Oh, the place has been crawling with tourists and there's an ugly mood afoot. I was afraid of this. You know the lad's lunchtime picnic monster cruise round the lock in his wee boat, the Bunty? Aye. Well, last week they ran into trouble. Oh, why, what happened? The tourists mutinied and cast the lad adrift in an open sandwich. Mutiny? <laughs> On the Bunty? <laughs> Whatever next? It's in all the papers. I see. What? Oh, what's this? Mrs. McAllister from the post office has been taken hostage by a coach party of Rotarians from Cheadle Hume. They say they won't release her until they've seen the monster. Well, be fair. We put up a big sign by the lock saying, just because you can't find it doesn't mean it isn't there. <laughs> well, nobody's going to believe that, are they? No. Now then, where's Mrs. Nochte? Over there, protesting for the laird. I heard she lay down in the road for him. Not for the first time? No. <laughs> oh. oh, dear. What can the matter be? My dear lad's locked in his laboratory. He's been there from Monday till Saturday. Nobody knew he was there. Now, what can he be up to? All I know is... He was down to Big Tam's video emporium last week, and he took out Frankenstein and Godzilla. Big Tam's daughters? No, no. <laughs> no, no, videos. Videos of Big Tam's daughters? Well, hold on, it's a very popular line. <laughs> well, I'd take issue with the dubbing. Uh, that's true. But... The laird's up to something, that's for sure. Come on, to the big hoose. <coughs> Hamish, stop doing that owl impression. <laughs> well, it calms my nerves. Goodness sake, do something else. All right. Oh, look. Here comes Rover, the sheepdog. Woof, woof. Mind those cows, Rover. Moo, moo. <laughs> woof, woof. Moo. I can do an impression of a burglar alarm. What? Listen. <laughs> Who's there? Now you've done it, woman. It's me and Dougal and Mrs. Naughty, sir. You'd better come in, but leave Rover and the cows out there with the owl. <laughs> Moo! Hey, Mish. Sorry. Yes, very good, Hamish. Now open the door. <laughs> Come in quickly and close the door behind you. That was me. <laughs> now, any requests? <laughs> Your Lordship, what is going on in this laboratory? Very well. What do you think? Of this. Hmm. That doesn't answer my question. No. <laughs> this. Oh. Oh. oh! Whatever is it? This is my creature. 
It's enormous. Over here, Mrs. Noxty. <laughs> oh, that's the most horrible thing I've seen since the over-60s nude motorcycle display team crashed in the middle of their human pyramid routine. Creating this almost cost me my sanity. Fearful nights haunting the abattoir and mortuary, hijacking the travelling giblet monger, and dreadful hours spent in the circus graveyard. And this... This thing is the result. It is. <laughs> Storm is raging. Now for the final touch. Quick, before the lightning strikes, connect those wires, turn that handle, stand by the big switch. Now, elements, do your thing. <laughs> Right, now we've got the light on, you can see it properly. <laughs> James! Oh, James, it, it looks like a... It looks... It, it looks like a log. It is a log. It's a very big log. Once again, the monster lives. <laughs> and now... To, to the, the log! log. Well, here we are at the lock. Why did you say that? I usually do. <laughs> Time for the launching. Mrs. Nocty, will you do the honours? Of course, but let's get this launching over first. <laughs> I named this log Monster of the Lock. God bless it and all who fall for it. Whee! Hooray! Hooray! We're back in business. Aye, that very big log would fool anybody. What's that? It's a great big scaly monster. It's attacking the very big log. It's not attacking Hamish. It's trying to mate with it. <laughs> Don't look, Mrs. Nocty. It's trying to get its leg over. That's not its leg. <laughs> Well, that was quick. Oh, yes, listen who's talking. <laughs> What's it up to now? It's eating the very big log. It must be one of those creatures that eats its partner after mating. Like a praying mantis? Well, thanks, I'm trying to cut down. <laughs> has eaten my very big log. I'll teach him a lesson. Your lordship. Yes? <laughs> you know, you know we started all this to fool the tourists into thinking there was a monster in the log. Yes. Well, it turns out we had a real monster all the time. And you just shot it. <laughs> and now we don't even have a very big log. I take your point. Let me think. Uh, ah, yes. Mrs. Nocte? I know. I'll get the rubber suit. <laughs> You'll have had your teeth. The doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Cryer and Graham Garth, with Alison Stedman as Mrs. Nocte and Jeremy Hardy as the letter. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Karen Street, Kylie Davis, Ros Stephen and Scott Howard. The producer was John Nixman.